Commercial Crew Development is a multiphase, space technology development program that is funded by the U.S. government and administered by NASA. The program is intended to stimulate development of privately operated crew vehicles to be launched into low Earth orbit. The program is run by NASA's Commercial Crew and Cargo Program Office C3PO. .In 2010, in the first phase of the program, NASA provided $50 million combined to five American companies. The money was intended for research and development into private sector human spaceflight concepts and technologies. NASA solicited a second set of CCDEV proposals for technology development projects lasting for a maximum of 14 months in October of that year. In April 2011, NASA announced they would award up to nearly $270 million to four companies as they met their CCDEV2 objectives. NASA awarded Space Act agreements for the third phase, named CCICAP, in August 2012. This would last until 2014. CCICAP is followed by CCTCAP with Federal Acquisition Regulation FAR Part 15 contracts, which formed the fourth and final phase of the program. Contracts were awarded to SpaceX and Boeing in September 2014. Test flights of both spacecraft are scheduled for late 2018. SpaceX and Boeing have contracts with NASA to each supply six flights to ISS between 2019 and 2024. The first group of astronauts assigned to fly on the two selected spacecraft were announced on August 3, 2018. Topic requirements The key, high-level requirements for the commercial crew vehicles include, deliver and return four crew members and their equipment to International Space Station ISS, provide assured crew return in the event of an emergency, serve as a 24-hour safe haven in the event of an emergency, capable of remaining docked for 210 days, the space shuttle could only remain docked for a maximum of 12 days. Topic program Overview The NASA CCDEV program followed Commercial Orbital Transportation Services COTS, a program for developing commercial launch capability to send cargo into low Earth orbit. In December 2009, NASA provided the following description of the CCDEV program. The objectives of the Commercial Crew and Cargo Program are to implement U.S. space exploration policy with investments to stimulate the commercial space industry, facilitate U.S. private industry demonstration of cargo and crew space transportation capabilities with the goal of achieving safe, reliable, cost effective access to low Earth orbit, and create a market environment in which commercial space transportation services are available to government and private sector customers, the Commercial Crew and Cargo Program is applying Recovery Act funds to stimulate efforts within the private sector to develop and demonstrate human spaceflight capabilities. NASA plans to use funds appropriated for exploration under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 through its C-3PO to support efforts within the private sector to develop system concepts and capabilities that could ultimately lead to the availability of commercial human spaceflight services. These efforts are intended to foster entrepreneurial activity leading to job growth in engineering, analysis, design, and research and to promote economic recovery as capabilities for new markets are created. ARA provided $400 million for space exploration related activities. Of this amount, $50 million is to be used for the development of commercial crew space transportation concepts and enabling capabilities. This effort is known as CCDEV. The purpose of this activity is to provide funding to assist viable commercial entities in the development of system concepts, key technologies, and capabilities that could ultimately be used in commercial crew human space transportation systems. This development work must show, within the timeframe of the agreement, significant progress on long lead capabilities, technologies and commercial crew risk mitigation tasks in order to accelerate the development of their commercial crew space transportation concept. Contract funding for the CCDEV program is different from traditional space industry contractor funding used on the Space Shuttle, Apollo, Gemini, and Mercury programs. Contracts are explicitly designed to fund subsystem technology development objectives that NASA wants for NASA purposes. All other system technology development is funded by the commercial contractor. Contracts are issued for fixed price, pay for performance milestones. NASA's contribution is fixed. Topic. Funding and effect on schedule The first flight of the CCDEV program was planned to occur in 2015, but insufficient funding caused delays. 
Administrator of NASA Charles Bolden attributed the delays to insufficient funding from Congress. Michael Lopez Alegria, president of the Commercial Spaceflight Federation, also attributed the delays in the program to funding problems. For the fiscal year FY 2011 budget, $500 million was requested for the CCDEV program, but Congress granted only $270 million. For the FY 2012 budget, $850 million was requested but Congress approved a budget of $406 million, and as a result the first flight of CCDEV was postponed from 2016 to 2017. For the 2013 budget, $830 million was requested but Congress approved $488 million. For the FY 2014 budget, $821 million was requested, Congress approved $696 million. In FY 2015, NASA received $805 million from Congress for the CCDEV program, 95% of the $848 million requested by the Obama administration and the largest annual amount since the beginning of the program. Spaceflight gap after STS After the last flight of the STS in 2011 the clock began ticking on a U.S. spaceflight gap. The previous spaceflight gap was between 1975 a Saturn IB launch and the first STS flight in April 1981, about six years. Unlike the last human spaceflight gap, the U.S. has bought seats on the still active Russian launcher as part of their continuing joint international project, the International Space Station. U.S. Congress was aware such a gap could occur and accelerated funding in 2008 and 2009 in preparation for the retirement of the shuttle. At that time the first crewed flight of the planned Ares I launcher would not have occurred until 2015, and its first use at ISS until 2016. Steps were also taken to extend STS operation past 2010. However, in 2010 the Ares I was cancelled and focus shifted to the Space Launch System and the Commercial Crew Program. As of 2016 the first manned flight of SLS is Exploration Mission 2, to launch in 2021 at the earliest. As of 2016 a manned commercial crew mission might occur as early as 2018. If NASA does get access to its own launcher it may be able to again trade seats rather than buy them, or the two countries may organize another sale. NASA has bought seats for 2018, and it may need to buy seats for 2019 also. NASA bought seats on the Russian launcher even while the Space Shuttle was active, and partners in the International Space Station project needed to cross-train on each other's launchers and equipment. When the STS program ended, this aspect of the involvement in ISS continued, and NASA has a contract for seats until at least 2017. The price has varied over time, and the batch of seats from 2016 to 2017 works out to 70.7 .7 million per passenger per flight. The use of the Russian launcher Soyuz by NASA was a part of the ISS program which was orchestrated in the 1990s when that project was planned out. It is used as the emergency lifeboat for the station even before the space shuttle retired so anyone staying on the station had to train on this spacecraft regardless. The first Soyuz flight to ISS in 2000 included a U.S. astronaut Soyuz TM-31 as part of Expedition 1. U.S. astronauts regularly flew on the Soyuz while the shuttle program regularly visited the station, even as it brought major components. Likewise Russian and other international partners also flew on the space shuttle and the Soyuz spacecraft, sometimes only on one direction of the journey. The U.S. was working on an emergency escape vehicle called the HL-20 Personnel Launch System but was cancelled in 1993 in favor of using extra Soyuz spacecraft as lifeboats. Not developing another spacecraft was seen as a way to save money in the aftermath of restructuring the Space Station Freedom Project when the USSR dissolved in 1991. Regardless, CCDEV seats have often been compared to Soyuz prices for comparison during its development. With no other launcher available NASA may have to buy seats until 2019 to access the International Space Station. The other main partners in ISS, the ESA, cancelled its own manned launch system, the Hermes Mini Shuttle, in 1992. The ESA had previously traded Spacelab hardware for flights on space shuttles. There has been some interest from Europe in the CCDEV contenders, especially with Dream Chaser, with one party saying it was ideal vehicle for a broad range of space applications. Phases 
Topic CCDEV1 Under CCDEV Phase 1, NASA has entered into funded Space Act agreements with several companies working on technologies and systems for human spaceflight. Funding was provided as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. A total of $50 million for 2010 was awarded to five American companies with the intention of fostering research and development into human spaceflight concepts and technologies in the private sector. The Phase 1 amount was originally intended to be $150 million, most of which was diverted to the Constellation program by Senator Richard Shelby RL. All 53 delivery milestones for the five companies were scheduled to be completed by the end of 2010. Topic. Proposal selected NASA awarded development funds to five companies under CCDEV-1 Blue Origin – $3.7 million for an innovative pusher launch abort system LAS and composite pressure vessels. As of February 2011, with the end of the second ground test, Blue Origin has completed all work for the pusher escape system planned under the contract. It has also completed work on the other aspect of its award, risk reduction work on a composite pressure vessel", for its vehicle. Boeing – $18 million for development of the CST-100 capsule it demonstrated in October 2010. According to NASA's website all milestones were completed. Paragon Space Development Corporation, $1.4 million for a plug-and-play environmental control and life support system ECLSS Air Revitalization System ARS Engineering Development Unit, with the completion of testing in mid-December of its Commercial Crew Transport Air Revitalization System, a life support system intended for use on multiple different commercial crew vehicles. Paragon has completed all work under the contract. Sierra Nevada Corporation, $20 million for development of the Dream Chaser, a reusable spaceplane vehicle that can transport cargo and up to eight people to low Earth orbit. Sierra Nevada completed its work under the contract in December 2010, with the structural testing of its engineering test article, its fourth and final milestone. United Launch Alliance, $6.7 million for an emergency detection system EDS for human rating its evolved expendable launch vehicles EELVs. .In December 2010, ULA carried out a demonstration of its emergency detection system. According to NASA's website all milestones were completed. Topic. Proposals received During the evaluation phase of CCDEV1 proposals were received from the following participants Topic. CCDEV2 NASA sought a second set of commercial crew development proposals in October 2010. These could be both new concepts and proposals that mature the design and development of system elements, such as launch vehicles and spacecraft. NASA originally planned to issue about $200 million of Space Act agreements in March 2011. On April 18, 2011, NASA awarded nearly $270 million to four companies for developing U.S. vehicles that could fly astronauts after the Space Shuttle fleet's retirement. In August the same year, NASA provided status on the progress milestones of the four companies developing crew vehicle technologies under CCDEV-2. There are 9 to 11 specific milestones, spread over the second quarter of 2011 through to the second quarter of 2012, that each company must meet to receive their performance-based funding for CCDEV-2. Proposal selected Winners of funding in the second round of the CCDEV were Blue Origin, Kent Washington, $22 million. Blue Origin proposed advancing technologies in support of a biconic nose cone design orbital vehicle, including launch abort systems and restartable, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen engines. Blue Origin has since completed all of its CCDEV2 milestones. In November 2014, NASA announced three additional unfunded milestones, which include further testing of Blue Origin's propellant tank, B3 engine and pusher escape system. Sierra Nevada Corporation, Louisville, Colorado, $80 million. 
Sierra Nevada proposed four Phase II extensions of its Dream Chaser spaceplane technology. Like the Orbital Sciences proposal, the Dream Chaser was also a lifting body design. Sierra Nevada will use Virgin Galactic to market Dream Chaser commercial services and will use Virgin's White Knight to carrier aircraft as a platform for drop trials of the Dream Chaser atmospheric test vehicle in 2012. Space Exploration Technologies SpaceX, Hawthorne, California, $75 million. SpaceX proposed to develop an integrated launch abort system design for the Dragon spacecraft, with theoretical advantages over the more traditional tractor tower approaches used on earlier manned space capsules. The system would be part of SpaceX's Draco maneuvering system, which is currently used on the Dragon capsule for in-orbit maneuvering and de-orbit burns. SpaceX completed its CCDEV2 milestones by August 2012. The Boeing Company, Houston, Texas, $92.3 million. Boeing proposed additional development for the seven-person CST-100 spacecraft, beyond the objectives for the $18 million received from NASA in CCDEV-1. The capsule will have personnel and cargo configurations, and is designed to be launched by multiple different rockets and be reusable up to ten times. Topic. Proposals selected without NASA funding United Launch Alliance proposed to extend development work on human rating the Atlas V rocket. Although not selected for funding, NASA entered into an unfunded Space Act agreement with ULA in July 2011 to share information with the goal of advancing the development of the rocket, which is the proposed launch vehicle for the Blue Origin, Boeing and Sierra Nevada Corporation proposals. ULA finished completing all of their CCDEV2 milestones by September 2012. Alliant Tech Systems ATK and Astrium proposed development of the Liberty rocket derived from the Ares I and Ariane 5. On September 13, 2011, it was reported that NASA intended to form an agreement with ATK to further develop the Liberty rocket as a heavy launch vehicle capable of launching humans into space. Although no funding is to be provided by NASA, the agency will share expertise and technology. ATK finished completing all of its CCDEV2 milestones by August 2012. Excalibur Almaz Inc. is developing a crewed system incorporating modernized, Soviet-era space hardware designs intended for tourism flights to orbit. On October 26, 2011, NASA announced it had entered into an unfunded Space Act agreement with EAI, establishing a framework to collaborate to further develop EAI's spacecraft concept for low Earth orbit crew transportation. EAI's concept for commercial crew to the ISS is to use the company's planned three-person space vehicle with an intermediate stage and fly the integrated vehicle on a commercially available launch vehicle. Excalibur Almaz finished completing all of their CCDEV2 milestones by June 2012. Topic. Proposals not selected Proposals that were not awarded funds in the second round of the CCDEV program were Orbital Sciences proposed the Prometheus lifting body spaceplane vehicle, about one quarter the size of the space shuttle. The vertical takeoff, horizontal landing VTHL vehicle would be launched on a human-rated Atlas V rocket but would land on a runway. The initial design would carry a crew of four, but it could carry up to six people or a combination of crew and cargo. In addition to orbital sciences, the consortium included Northrop Grumman that would have built the spaceplane and the United Launch Alliance that would have provided the launch vehicle. Virgin Galactic also confirmed it would be teaming with Orbital on the Orbital CCDEV2 project. After failing to be selected for a CCDEV Phase II award by NASA, Orbital announced in April 2011 it would likely wind down its efforts to develop a commercial crew vehicle. Paragon Space Development Corporation proposed additional development of the Commercial Crew Transport Air Revitalization System CCTARS program in 2011, to permit the building out of the other parts of the environmental control and life support systems to provide the complete solution for its commercial crew transport customers. T. Space proposed a recoverable, reusable, eight-person crew or cargo transfer spacecraft that could launch on a variety of launch vehicles including the Atlas V, Falcon 9 and Taurus II rockets. 
United Space Alliance proposed under a plan called Commercial Space Transportation Service CSTS to fly commercially the two remaining Space Shuttle vehicles, Endeavour and Atlantis, twice a year from 2013 to 2017. Topic. Commercial crew integrated capability The Commercial Crew Integrated Capability CCICAP initiative is the third round of the CCDEV program and was originally called CCDEV-3. For this phase of the program, NASA wanted proposals to be complete, end-to-end -end designs including spacecraft, launch vehicles, launch services, ground and mission operations, and recovery. In September 2011, NASA released a draft request for proposals RFP. The U.S. government's was originally intended to use a new contracting mechanism for CCICAP that differed from the Space Act Agreement's fixed price, milestone-based contracts of the previous phases. As of October 2011, NASA was planning to award competitive contracts under the more traditional Federal Acquisition Regulations FAR system instead of using Space Act Agreements. After some months of planning for the new style contracting approach, NASA announced in mid-December 2011 it would resume use of Space Act agreements because of congressional funding reductions to the program for fiscal year 2012. NASA planned to use FAR contracts for the certification of commercial transportation services to the ISS. The final RFP was released on February 7, 2012, with proposals due on March 23, 2012. The funded Space Act agreements were awarded on August 3, 2012, and amended on August 15, 2013. CCICAP contracts were planned to be completed by August 2014. NASA hoped facilitating development of this U.S. capability will provide safe, reliable, and cost effective human transportation to low Earth orbit. LEO. Topic. Proposals selected Winners of funding in the third round of the Commercial Crew Development Program, announced on August 3, 2012, were Sierra Nevada Corporation, Louisville, Colorado, $212.5 million. Sierra Nevada Corporation proposed further development of its Dream Chaser spaceplane, Atlas V system. Space Exploration Technologies SpaceX, Hawthorne, California, $440 million. SpaceX proposed further development of the Dragon spacecraft, Falcon 9 system. The Boeing Company, Houston, Texas, $460 million. Boeing proposed further development for the CST-100 spacecraft, Atlas V system. Topic. Proposals that passed acceptability screening. ATK, Liberty Topic. Proposals not selected Space Operations American Aerospace Space Design Corporation Topic. Development achievements NASA reported that as of November 2014, Boeing had completed its CCICAP milestones, Sierra Nevada had completed 10 of its 13 milestones, SpaceX had completed 13 of its 18 milestones. SpaceX received an extra milestone that is to be completed by March 2015. The milestones are listed in the appendixes to the funded Space Act agreements. In May 2014 Boeing, Sierra Nevada Corporation and SpaceX completed reviews detailing plans to meet NASA's certification requirements to transport crew members to and from the ISS. Topic. Preparation for the next phase In June 2014, Boeing announced it intended to send out preliminary layoff notices to 215 employees approximately 170 in Houston and 45 in Florida, to prepare for the possibility that Boeing would not be selected to continue work into the next phase following the expected NASA shortlist in mid-2014. These advance notices are required under the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act legislation under U.S. law, and must be issued 60 days before any large layoff is expected to take effect. If Boeing was selected to continue, the layoffs would not occur and Boeing would hire an additional 75 personnel. Sierra Nevada is not preparing any war notices to its Dream Chaser workforce. Topic. Certification Products Contract CPC Phase 1 
The first phase of the Certification Products Contract CPC involved the review of the integrated crew transportation systems through the creation of a certification plan that would result in the development of engineering standards, tests and analyses of the system's designs. This phase of CPC was expected to run from January 22, 2013, to May 30, 2014. Topic. Proposal selected Winners of funding of Phase 1 of the CPC, announced on December 10, 2012, were Sierra Nevada Corporation, Louisville, Colorado, $10 million Space Exploration Technologies SpaceX, Hawthorne, California, $9.6 million The Boeing Company, Houston, Texas, $9.9 .9 million Topic. Certification Products Contract CPC Phase 2 The second phase of the CPC was expected to begin in mid-2014, it would involve a full and open competition and would include the final development, testing and verifications to allow crewed demonstration flights to the ISS. Phase 2 is called Commercial Crew Transportation Capability CCTCAP. NASA proposed the second phase of the program would begin purchasing commercial astronaut transportation services with the CCTCAP solicitation. Contract award and funding occurred in 2014. Flights of NASA astronauts on CCTCAP provided vehicles would not occur before 2017. In a change from previous CCDEV programs where commercial providers tested the developed technology to NASA contractual requirements, CCTCAP will include joint test teams JTT with NASA personnel operating in a traditional NASA acquisition approach in which NASA oversees some design choices and offers flexible price cost sharing to pay for the tests. NASA issued the draft CCTCAP contracts request for proposals RFP on July 19, 2013. The response date was August 15, 2013, according to the letter and executive summary. The CCTCAP contract is the second phase of a two-phased procurement strategy to develop a U.S. commercial crew space transportation capability to achieve safe, reliable and cost-effective access to and from the ISS with a goal of no later than 2017. Performance-based payments are to be used in this competitive, negotiated acquisition. Proposed deviation language to specific FAR and NFS clauses and proposed waiving of clauses were suggested. Under CCTCAP the final design, development, test, and evaluation DDTE activities necessary to achieve NASA's certification of a crew transportation system CTS will be conducted. The contract will be issued under Federal Acquisition Regulations FAR Part 15 and will be firm fixed price FFP. There are four separate contract line items CLINs for CTS certification, ISS mission support, special studies and additional cargo capability if proposed. NASA was to supply four docking system Block 1 units on a no-charge-for-use basis. The first unit would be available in February 2016. NASA held a commercial crew pre-proposal conference at Kennedy Space Center on December 4, 2013, after formally requesting proposals for CCTCAP in late November that year. NASA's 2014 budget for CCTCAP was $696 million. It was reduced from an Obama administration request of $821 million. In May 2014, NASA announced each awardee was to perform at least one crewed test flight to verify the spacecraft could dock with the ISS and all its systems performed as expected. NASA intended to meet its station crew rotation requirements by including at least two, and at most six crewed, post-certification missions in the contracts. NASA also intended CCTCAP would allow U.S. providers to supply other customers. Topic. Awards On September 16, 2014, NASA announced that Boeing and SpaceX had received contracts to provide crewed launch services to the ISS. For completing the same contract requirements, Boeing could receive up to $4.2 billion, while SpaceX could receive up to $2.6 billion. 
Both Boeing CST-100 flying on United Launch Alliance Atlas V and SpaceX Dragon V2 flying on Falcon 9 were awarded for the same set of requirements, completing development and certification of their crew vehicle then flying a certification flight followed by up to six operational flights to the ISS. The contracts included at least two operational flights for each company. The total program award of $6.8 billion covers development costs through CCTCAP program funding $3.42 billion over the years 2015 2019, with $848 million in the commercial crew budget request for FY 2015, and $3.4 billion for operational crew resupply to the ISS. 12 flights with four astronauts on each flight, where NASA assumed the same per seat price of $70.7 .7 million it would pay for each Soyuz seat in 2016. With the program awards in September, NASA did not release the number of proposals it received or any details about the selection process. It stated such information would be released at an appropriate but unspecified date. On September 26, 2014, Sierra Nevada Corporation submitted a protest of the CCTCAP awards, stating to have undercut Boeing by $900 million while scoring close to its competitors in the other criteria. The Government Accountability Office had until January 5, 2015, to rule on the protest. By October 1, 2014, NASA had instructed Boeing and SpaceX to halt work on the CCTCAP contracts. On October 8, 2014, NASA instructed the contractors to proceed with contract work during the GAO review. In January 2015, the GAO denied Sierra Nevada Corporation's protest. In 2016, the firm's scheduled additional testing and certification milestones. The auditors do not expect the first flights until late 2018. Topic CCTCAP contract progress As of December 2014, both SpaceX and Boeing had started work on their Commercial Crew Transportation Capability CCTCAP contracts, as of September 2016 although both companies are advancing they are running behind their previous schedule. Additional milestones have been agreed with NASA C Annex B Boeing and Annex C SpaceX of the September 2016 audit of the Commercial Crew Program. Boeing increased its milestones from 23 to 34 and has achieved 15. SpaceX has increased its milestones from 18 to 21 and has achieved 8. SpaceX also has an uncompleted milestone left over from CCICAP. Topic flights As of January 2017 NASA has ordered 12 commercial post-certification missions to deliver astronauts to the International Space Station, 6 with each supplier. Astronaut selections for the first four missions were announced on August 2, 2018. Topic funding summary The funding of all commercial crew contractors for each phase of the CCP program is as follows. CCTCAP values are maxima and include post-development operational flights. Topic see also Commercial Orbital Transportation Services COTS, 2000 Spacecraft Development Program, predecessor to the CRS and CCDEV Programs Commercial Resupply Services CRS contract to deliver cargo to the ISS NASA Docking System Private Spaceflight Review of United States Human Space Flight Plans Committee Space Shuttle Successors Topic Notes Topic References Topic External links Official NASA Commercial Crew Program Page Commercial Crew and Cargo Document Library on NASA.gov CCDEV1 Space Act Agreements Partners Mature Spacecraft Designs, NASA Video Update, 14 January 2014. Boeing CCTCAP Contract Redacted SpaceX CCTCAP contract redacted